Flying a bomber, it was nothing but rhythm. The ability to, to, to be a part of an airplane rather than the, trying to push an airplane, let the airplane do its turning. John O'Connor served a dual role in the Army Air Corps during World War II. After becoming chief aircraft commander of a new plane known as the B-24 Liberator, the former high school band director set out to lift morale by forming a swing band consisting of members of his airborne crew. There's a string bass, and we had a clarinet, and we had the trumpet, a saxophone, and we took off from our air base. When we leveled off, I let the co-pilot fly, and I'd get out my horn. See, they had nothing to do when they weren't manning their guns. And eventually the, the commander said, I don't mind if you're playing those horns as long as you're not out of contact with the German Air Force there. So we would be free from any interruption until we crossed the Adriatic Sea and got into Yugoslavia. That's where we'd pick up the first enemy airplanes. Immediately, <laughs> the instruments were in their cases and out of the way and were on their guns. And they would stay that way the whole flight to the enemy targets and coming back. The moment we got past the Italian Alps, we could get our horns out again and play until we landed. And we played Tiger Rag, we played um, T for Two, Dixieland mostly, and sentimental stuff too. That's, that was the routine. The musical bond formed aboard the B-24 Liberator served in uniting crew members as they prepared for a daring attack in August of 1943 on the German-controlled Palesti oil fields in Romania. The Palesti Raid was the first large-scale, low-level daytime attack on a heavily defended German target. Military planners believed that destruction of the refineries would halt Hitler's ability to refuel and wage war. When the enemy began their attack on John O'Connor's squadron, he fought back with musical style, employing an attack strategy complete with rhythmic patterns. It was a beautiful day, and, you could, and the Germans had smoke pots that they put up on the ground, and that smoke pots would come up and cloud the target, making it very difficult to, to see the oil fields and so forth. But in this case, the wind came up just in time when our group came over there to clear the smoke, but the German fighter aircraft were following us in. That was my first mission of that type there, and all I had in my mind was to get away from those people. The fighters that followed us, I tried something different that I thought was saved our necks, and that was up, down, up, down, left, right, left, right. Well, my wingmen had a hard time staying with me, but they overshot us. So we soon lost those airplanes. We didn't fool around with us anymore. They wasted all their ammunition. And uh, my gunners were all intact and shooting like mad. We got credit for shooting three fight German fighters down for that mission. John recalls a challenging moment when he was summoned to the back of his airplane. His co-pilot, equipped with only 100 hours of flight training, had to take control of the squadron and fight the enemy while John attended to a crew member in need of medical attention. When I knew we were in trouble, particularly when we lost the engines, I let the co-pilot fly. And the tail gunner, he was hit by a 20 millimeter shell out of a Messerschmitt in the tail and blasted out of his turret that he operated near death, you know. You had to get back there. I couldn't send him back because he was too nervous. When he saw blood, he turned white, you know. My tail gunner was wounded so badly he died. So that was, that was definitely sad. John lost his friend while the bombs dropped. Of the 177 bomber planes that took part in the Palesti raid, 54 were never heard from again. O'Connor flew 50 missions before returning home to continue a lifelong career as a music educator at the University of Illinois. Now, as then, one principle continues to serve him. When you think about everything that happened in these battle scenes and so forth, really, all of it goes back to how you were trained and how you were experienced in life. No matter who you were or what kind of a squadron you were in, the principles were the same. Honesty. <laughs>